Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 13th, 2017. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Well, you dig that real fine job with the welcome beat, fall in there, lose your lead at the house, the house of life. It is the day after the day after. And in light of the Alabama election upset, people are blaming. They're pointing fingers. They're getting vicious. They're blaming Steve Bannon. They're blaming Roy Moore. They're blaming everybody. But I've been thinking about it. In light of the Alabama election upset based on what? Sex scandals. This is the most sex-crazed nation God has ever created. It's around-the-clock sex madness. And it was sex that brought Roy Moore down. Make no mistake about it. It had nothing to do with conservative values, liberal values, which there are none. Nothing. Nothing to do with politics. It was all about sex scandals. So I was thinking about this. You want to talk about who to blame? I don't, don't call me on that. I don't really care who you blame. Everyone's blaming Steve Bannon, and they're blaming this one, and they're saying Trump is finished. It was about a sex scandal dredged up by the Washington Post augmented by a psychotic lawyer who, in my opinion, should be disbarred and put in jail for 20 years. But in light of the Alabama election upset based on sex scandals, should prostitution be legalized is the question that's uh, plaguing me, and I'll tell you why. I realize this flies in the face of family values. I get that. But, you know, we've come a long way, baby, and this country is in real trouble because now if a man does what every man has been doing since Adam, which is look at women and want to be with women, which is what nature intended it to be. Yes, that's the way it is. And no amount of psychotic feminists on earth are ever going to change man's nature. Never. So what do you want men to do with their testosterone and their desire for women? Sleep with other men? It ain't happening. So we're going to have to come to terms with the new America. You know, how many times have we talked about religion? and Islam, and that Christianity went through a reformation in the Middle Ages, and as a result, Christians are not violent. They don't kill in the name of religion anyway. While Islam has never gone through a reformation, and many of the practitioners of that religion still practice a fundamentalist form of that religion. And we said there must be a reformation. Well, there must be a reformation in the moral codes of America as well. I realize that this is going to shock people in the evangelical movement. It's going to shock people in the Orthodox Jewish movement. But, you know, lie to yourself, don't lie to me. I know what goes on behind closed doors. You're telling me that all of these high holy rollers don't engage uh, in uh, questionable practices in some cases? It's been gone on since the beginning of time. The only difference here is it's illegal and make-believe it doesn't happen. So I'm asking you, the election's all about sex and scandal. It's not about conservative liberal. I mean, the morons on MSNBC may be saying, aha, this proves everyone wants communism. This proves, aha, everybody really wants communism. Everybody wants communism. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It was about a sex scandal. That's all it was. So who are you going to blame? I don't really care who you blame. The country is consumed right now with blame. Who among you listening to this show you, 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 you in Dallas, you in New York, you in San Francisco, you, you crypto liberal, you, you crypto conservative fake liberal over there in San Francisco who listens to me every day and then makes believe you don't listen to the show, you. Let me ask you something. <clears throat> who among you does not have a skeleton in their closet? Didn't Jesus say, as the prostitute Mary Magdalene was about to be stoned to death, let he among you who is without sin cast the first stone? That is where that saying came from. It was Jesus stepping in to save the life of the prostitute Mary Magdalene. Many of you don't even know that. You don't know that prostitution existed way back. It's the world's oldest profession. It preceded even politics. So the fact is everyone has something they're hiding. 
something that if it was discovered can turn into a gigantic scandal that will wreck their lives, even if it's not true. And as I said to you from the beginning of this scandal-mongering in America, the cult of Jacques has now become a tsunami. And those that worship the God of accusation are bound to be destroyed by that which they and how they accuse. So, my friends, an election was just decided because of a sex scandal, and many people are blaming various people. Who do you blame? I don't care. I really don't care who you blame. Should prostitution be legalized? Yes or no? And also, here's a secondary question. It's not really the main thing. I want you to listen to talk radio on and off for the next day, particularly today. I want you to listen to the, the conservative blowhards who backed Roy Moore squirm as they lie to you. And I'm going to ask you, how do you feel about conservative blowhards who backed Roy Moore who are now saying they didn't? You know, when I came into radio 24 years ago, I, I knew a man who owned 300 rock and roll stations. He was a lawyer who uh, ran the Kennedy White House. I knew him through social, the social group. Oh, there goes the microphone. It spun around on its stand. And he said to me, Michael, remember, when you set off on this road and talk radio, I know you're going to be a giant. I've heard you. You're going to be the best. He said, you have only one thing, and that is your credibility. Without it, you're going to be lost. There'll be nothing. I can say to you with 100% certainty that I have my credibility today. I never backed Roy Moore. I wouldn't talk about Roy Moore. I was not interested in it. When I went on the Larry King show to discuss my book, God, Faith, and Reason, the first thing he tried to nail me with was, so let's talk about Roy Moore. I said, I don't live in Alabama. Can we go back to God, Faith, and Reason? I, well, you don't live in Alabama, but if you live there, would you vote for him? I said, can we talk about God, Faith, and Reason? I wouldn't be, tra I wouldn't be entrapped. So I maintain my credibility. I wouldn't be sucked into this swamp of Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore. Didn't discuss it. But there are those in conservative radio who bet their careers on it and lost. But what will the consequences be? Why nothing? They attacked Trump for a year straight, then they became Trumpers. After calling every one of you who voted for him Trumpers, Trumpeteers, Trumpettes, after calling those of us who supported Trump pom-pom girls, they suddenly became bootlickers of Donald Trump trying to gain favor in the White House. And what's happened to them? Nothing. And that is because the talk radio audience, I'm sorry to tell you, has zero collective memory. The collective memory of the talk radio audience is about equal to that of a gnat. But the fact is a gnat probably has better collective memory because they wouldn't survive as gnats if they didn't have it. And how you could survive not having a collective memory of who says what, well, I don't know, it bewilders me. And so, yeah... I've always been an independent. I've never been a Republican, never registered as one, never worked for one. And the fact of the matter is, I'm still an independent talk show host. I am a conservationist. I'm an animal rights activist. I have been from the beginning. I'm a nutritionist. I'm a homeopathist. I'm an herbalist. So what are you going to do, crucify me for knowing what's right and what's wrong? Well, that's your problem. Today is the second day of Hanukkah, by the way. Yesterday I did a brilliant analysis of the meaning of Hanukkah for those out there who don't want the traditional view with the dreidel and the whole shmigigi. Uh I thought my interpretation was good. If you missed it, you missed it. Yesterday I had Steve Bannon on the show in the first hour. It was a very, pro it was a very interesting interview in light of the fact that today he's now being vilified and being accused for having lost the, the reason the election was lost. Trump hates him. This one hates him. That one hates him. His mother doesn't like him. His father doesn't like him. People who a day before loved him and wanted to be around him and couldn't wait to meet him and wanted him. Now they don't want to know him anymore. But um, I, I may replay that interview in the second hour because I thought it was an interesting interview. Steve Bannon I'm talking about. Or the God... I could talk about my book. I know many people are calling and saying they went into the bookstore at Barnes & Noble and moved my book from Christian Inspirational to where it belongs, which is bestsellers. I like that. And I do really want to talk about the big top. I mean, it's it's close to the holidays already. Everyone's off next week and the week after. I think everyone's taking a two-week powder, right? I don't know. I heard everyone in talk radio is leaving for two weeks. I don't know what anyone else is doing. I'll be here most of next week. Then I'm threatening to be gone after that, although I've already changed vacation plans three times. First, I was going to go to L.A., cancel that. Then I was going to go to Florida, cancel that. Then L.A. came back up, and I canceled that. Then Florida came up again, and I canceled that. 
because I came to the conclusion that I actually am happy where I am. And as miserable as I am in my own way, I realize life is hard wherever you are. So what's the point of going anywhere? If you have everything you need, if you, if you have everything you need and the air is clean, right, why go, why go anywhere? What do I need to travel for? I have a bed. I can have the same nightmares in my bed that I have in L.A. or Florida or Acapulco. Every night I go to sleep, I don't know what horror show is going to be playing between my ears. I look forward to it every night. I don't know which monsters are going to come up. I kind of look forward to it. I detach myself from them. Oh, it's them again? I had a weird one last night. What a weird nightmare I had last night. I'm afraid to even tell you. And I, I ate well. I ate Japanese food before dinner. I had nothing slimy, nothing crawled. Everything was cooked. <laughs> Everything had been cooked. I don't even understand it. It was just a cold, bitter night out here in the San Francisco area. And uh, I take out Japanese food because I've given up on going into restaurants. I can't take it. To even say anything to the waitress or waiter gets me upset now. I don't want to say to them, no salt, no sugar, and don't put that that killer white pepper in again or I'll send the food back because my ears itch. I didn't. So I get takeout. Everything was good. It was easy. I watched the news for five minutes. Wait a minute. It must have been the... Yeah, oh, wait. It was the History Channel, the Western Front, the Nazis again. Sorry. Ah, yes. The old Nazis again. Never should watch them. The only reason I watch History Channel and World War II about Hitler is because I know he loses in the end. And the once victorious Horst Vessel singers wind up killed. I know how that story ends, which is why I like to watch it. But anyway, I, I maybe that provoked the dream. I don't want to be too specific about the dream, and that the subject of today's show is not really about the dream, but I'll tell it to you generically. Uh, several men were trying to hurt me in a very, very bad way. I was outnumbered. I pulled out a gun and killed them all in the dream. Now, this is because I went to the pistol range on Saturday to requalify for a certain license I have. And uh, the instru- it was an outdoor range in uh, Richmond, California. And I never shot in an outdoor range. I never shot a handgun in an outdoor range. I shot rifles in outdoor ranges years ago. And the instructor, who's a great guy, he says to me, hey, he said, this is the first time in all the years you've qualified that you had so many direct headshots. He said, how come your confidence is up? I said, I don't know. I haven't shot the gun in two years since I qualified two years ago. He said, well, your confidence is way up. You've got some great headshots in there. I don't know. It empowered me. Now I know why people like to go to ranges. It gives you a sense of control and power, doesn't it? No calls. No calls on that, please. No gun nuts. No, sorry, Bob. Three third rails in talk radio. One is UFOs. Two is guns. And I don't know what the third is. I don't know what the third rail is. I know there's another third rail somewhere on radio. My God, I'm running late because you know why? You know why? Because I'm riding high. This is the Savage Nation. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Yeah, welcome back to Savage Nation, 855-407-282. In light of the Alabama election upset, which is based on the sex scandal, that's all it was based on. I don't know how you can argue it wasn't a repudiation of conservative principles. That's not the issue at all. It was the sex stuff. They dragged $100 through a couple of trailer parks. They drug up some uh, history there. Whether he did it or not is irrelevant. It's stuck, and that's what it is. And, you know, something you don't know about, the African-American community is very conservative in the South, very religious, very Christian. You think it's all about Democrat, you're wrong. They didn't vote because they wanted communism or they want the corruption of the Democrat Party. They just don't want, like, a dirty person in office. You don't know that. KLIF, Dallas, Texas, Tess, you're the first up. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. Um, look, in the, the whole sex thing, you know, I've been, I'm in my 50s, and I've been around for a while. Uh-oh. And I've gone through a lot of things throughout Uh-oh. the years, and you were spot on in your monologue. Well, what part of it? Be specific. Tell us. Men, men are men, 
this is nothing new. It's going to continue. Right. And this was all on that, as far as the way I see it, as far as when they brought up this stuff on Trump and the stuff, you know, with the Alabama guy. My opinion is, is that, you know, it is what it is. Move on, people. All right, thanks for the call. That's Nida here and there. She really wanted to confess to her sins, but I'm not a priest, so we'll move on. <laughs> we kind of heard it implied. She's been around. and uh, Okay, hey, whatever. Not my problem. Uh, you want to talk about that? WABC James, line five. James, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, James? Hi, hi, Dr. Savage. Um, yeah, I'm calling from Darien, Connecticut, so a uh, very liberal area, and I'm only 30 years old, so I hate the term millennial, but that's what they call us, and uh, I really love your show, and it's kind of like an outlet for me to, you know, sort of just um, really, like, back up my beliefs and everything, because in this area where I live, you know, I'm kind of a man man by himself here. I know, you're man on a man on a wire out there. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I, everywhere I go, if I'm in a bar or a store... All right, I, I don't care. It's a tale of woe. you got to learn a few things, James, and it's a hard thing to learn. A, ditch all your friends. Walk alone. Learn to walk alone. You don't need them. They're not your friends. The day you walk away from these so-called progressive friends of yours is the day you will walk on your own road, and you'll find... You'll discover in time that this advice is the best advice you've ever been given. You'll find that your world will emerge for you. But with them whispering in your ear, you're, you're spending a lot of your energy like debating them in your head and debating them in, in reality. Am I correct? You're right. You're absolutely right. You're thinking, oh, what would Bob say if I did this? What would Billy say if I did that? Forget them. Walk away from them. You outgrew them. They're like childhood toys. It doesn't mean they're bad. They're bad for you. I had such negative influences on me in North Beach in San Francisco. I loved hanging around with these guys, the poets and this one, that. They wore me down. They're still where I left them. Nobody amounted to anything. And that's what's going to happen to you if you walk away from them and you follow your own star. Then you'll find out where you belong. That's all. Not It's good advice. That's all. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Uh, what are men supposed to do with their uh, with their uh, impulses? Make believe they're not there. You know, they're not going to go away. They've been in, 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 in. They're there. They're there. They're there. They're there. So what are men supposed to do with it? Make believe they're not there. Become a sex changer. You see, we have to evolve in this country past this uh, idiocy of, of like, it's a, it's a duality, a fake duality of, you know, Victorian values that no longer exist, living in the past. I love the fools that were saying, this election proves that the Democrats have to help black people in the South. The black people in Alabama are very conservative. This was not about liberal versus conservative values. The black people who came out came out because they voted against the alleged immorality of one of the candidates. How many times do I have to say the same thing? I can't believe how, how vacuous people are in the media. That no one understands that. They think it's something else. You can spin it into anything you want, but it's really about Christian values. And uh, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore. He's gone. He's in the past. The big issue is not um, African Americans or white Americans. The issue there was about scandal, sex scandal. That was the upset. Make no mistake about it. And how you can listen to f conservative blowhards who back more, I'm talking 100%, and now they're like backpedaling and saying, they were, I didn't back them, I almost backed them, you thought I backed them. I was pretending to back him. You think I backed him. I didn't back him. I tricked you in thinking I wasn't for him. I was against him, but you thought I was for him in order to think I was against him. And the reason I acted as though I was against him is so you would think I was for him. But in the fact of the matter, if you'll buy this toupee, come on. Credibility, credibility, credibility. That's all we have in this business. Otherwise, get off the damn radio. Hang up the microphone and retire. Stop lying to everybody. You don't know what this does to me every day. Many of you think that this is a uh, a fraternity. 
It is a cartel run by one family, except for me. I'm talking about the major radio talk show hosts. I'm the only one not in a cartel. I'm sick of you thinking that they're all so good. They're all such great Americans. And they're all so fair and they want to share. They want to cut your throat and throw you in the gutter if they're not taking a skim off the top of your income. What the heck is wrong with you people? It's got me so bottled up, I had to say it finally. And I think this election should be the watershed moment for you to understand what's what and who's who. And make your own decisions. We don't all get together over a beer after the show. We don't know each other. However, a number of them do know each other. They share the same agent. And they want me out of the business. And they resented the fact that I came along out of nowhere, they thought, and took over drive time on the East Coast on WABC and everywhere else. And they didn't get a skim off that money. You want the naked truth? You just got it. I gave you a little Hanukkah present for day two. It's all about the money. And don't fall for the malarkey about how great they are as Americans and how good they are to everybody and how they share with everybody. They steal the light of the next man if they could. They block the light and let the next man die if they could. And I am sick of you thinking otherwise. Just sick of it. And I feel much better telling you this. And I had to tell you this. Because this election is all about that. That cartel all backed Roy Moore. Everybody in that cartel, for some reason, backed Roy Moore. I didn't. Don't ask me why I didn't back him, because I don't live in Alabama. That was the whole reason. The whole election, to me, should have been about something other than Roy Moore. It should have been about issues like immigration. I don't know if you understand that Jeff Sessions used to hold that seat. Jeff Sessions was the stalwart on the immigration issues in the, in the Senate. And then he went up to the Attorney Generalship, and the seat opened up. But when uh, Sessions was the senator in that state, he won the vote by 97%. It was a locked seat. The Alabamans, they don't want illegal immigrants in the country. That includes African Americans. That's this, another great big secret in this country. Most poor African Americans do not want illegal aliens in this country because the illegal aliens get more benefits than do the indigenous people who are in need, in plain English. So what, what can I say to you? I see the whole story here. It's one. It's my. It's my opinion. Uh, what do you want to do? I got some nice archive stuff from the past. Are you interested in the archive of the sex scandal, savage childhood stories? Because it's getting near the holidays, and I do this stuff. Love by the sewer plant. The leather man ends up with cancer. Louis the alcoholic. Caretaker woodchuck Bill. Half man, half woman in Long Beach. Monkeys rampa. Uh, the cultural phenomenon of crack pants. Savage's nutty friend with a wacko mother who was on speed. Yeah, I had a friend whose mother was on speed. I'm talking in the 50s in Queens. This is a great story. Maybe I'll tell that later. How about the perver the pervert outside the New York Museum of Natural History? Uh, the chest he used to sell chestnuts. I remember those cold days outside the um, great, great museum in New York, the Museum of Natural History. I spent a lot of time in there. I loved it. It was so vast. It was, what a treasure of the mind. And outside the museum... There was a white guy who sold chestnuts. You know, cold with the chestnut. Are they still in New York? Sure, they're still there. Chestnut men, we call them. Well, this guy always used to try to get us up to his room, my friend and I. We must have been 10 or 11 or 12. We'd go into Manhattan, hang out, go to uh, Hubert's Flea Circus, Subway, uh, whatever. And Hey, hey, guys, you, you, you want to come up to my place and see pictures? I swear to God. We knew he was a perv. And just for fun, we'd play him along sometimes just to drive him crazy. We knew it. We weren't going to go with him. We knew he was a sick perv. But we were smart enough to defend ourselves. I mean, what, do we need someone to help us? You know, if he, if he acted up, we would have thrown the hot chestnuts and the coals on him. So we didn't need anyone, anybody to tell us what was what. We, how come we knew at 12? We didn't need a school mom to tell us. We didn't need a safe space to go to. We weren't snowflakes. We knew what he was. And you survived, that's all. That was a, I told the story in my own way in a shorter time. Louis the Alcoholic I did recently. Love by this uh, monkey's rampage, a culture from a crack pan. Nah, I'm not going to play any of these. I think we'll do contemporary. I don't know what you really, what do you really want me to do today? I'm Roy Moore you want me to talk about till I'm green in the face? Nah. My mind is in there. Here. GOP and House Senate reach deal on tax cuts. Big deal. 
Okay, great. Another victory, another big victory. The gobbler's up there, already gobbling away. Kentucky, uh, what's his name? I forget. Mitch. Kentucky, I know his name, the gobbler with the gullet. I think she tightened up the gullet a little. They must have done a little over the holiday uh, surgery over uh, Thanksgiving. It's tighter. It's not hanging down below his necktie. All right, I'm not a politician. I, I never, I never wanted to be in politics. I never wanted to work for politician. I was never a bureaucrat. Don't want to be a bureaucrat. I don't think like a bureaucrat. I'm not a civil servant. I'm just civil, but I'm not a servant, and I'm a servant of civility. If you want me to play with words, I'll be happy to do so. Trump called on members of five families. That's funny. Joining him to talk about how exactly the tax plan would help them. Five families. That is so symbolic. Trump called on five families. They, the media could attack him on that. Trump calls on five families. The families say they'll use their tax savings <laughs> to do home renovations, pay college tuition, and help other people. President trying to count the concerns that the tax plan will primarily benefit the rich. Uh, it won't benefet the rich. Uh, I can tell you that right now, except if you're very corporate rich. Trump says that if Congress finishes the tax bill before Christmas, the IRS has confirmed that Americans will see lower tax and bigger... Oh, come on. Okay, right, okay, right, 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 right. Okay, and on we go. So they did it already? or are they, they? What's the headline? Trump Lord's deal on GOP tax cuts. All right, throw him a bone. Roy Moore spokesman reamed for Bible flub. What's this one now? What did he just say wrong? Roy Moore caused many jaws to drop with an absolutely bizarre appearance on CNN, which he said that his boss probably wants to outlaw homosexuality. Oh, I'm not interested in this again. Anything to do with homosexuality makes it to the Chronicle in San Francisco, the front page. They're obsessed with the subject. Can't you grow up already? No one really cares about your sexuality. It's not really au courant, and it's really not a hot subject. You know, we all know about it. Big deal. Get over it already. Move up. You know, move up to the eighth grade in San Francisco. Stop being obsessed with uh, with your sexuality. So who do you blame? I don't care. It's about sex scandals, nothing else. And I asked a loaded question, and no one answered. In light of the Alabama election upset based on sex scandals, should prostitution be legalized? I didn't say it should, no. I said, should it be? Say, be careful what you hear, because I may use it against you. <laughs> oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. So here we are it's on the, um, when is, what date is today, right? The 13th. Baruch Hator Adenoi Eloheinu Melahalom, Asher Kedishonu B'Mitzvah Sav, Vitzivonu Lehela Ner Hanukkah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah light. That's all the people say. There's two others, but then they light the candle. Last night, people lit one candle, and tonight two. And what it does is so many things come up. It shows you, you wait all year for certain holidays. And in this case, it's Hanukkah. It could be Passover. It could be Easter. It could be Christmas. And it comes and it goes so fast. It's like life itself. It's so fleeting, isn't it? And each night that anyone with high consciousness lights a candle and sees beyond the holiday itself, what they see is the speed of light in which our life passes before our own, our own eyes. And as we are, when we are young, the days stretch out before us endlessly. A day is so long. Sitting in school, listening to geometry, you could die sitting in there. The day is forever. But as you get older, that day is so fast, it's like a bullet. And, and as I say, there's a reason for that as well. I, I asked a friend of mine, to explain it, I, I don't remember the answer. It was so good. He explained why a man of 70 or a person of 70 sees time differently than a boy of 7. He, you know, I have to ask him. I'll run into him later. I don't remember the answer, but it was very profound. But it's a phenomenon that everyone knows. The oldest would say to the youngers. The elders would say to the youth, don't worry when you get older. You'll see how fast it goes. And you look at them like they were crazy. Remember? Does anyone remember that? The, the grandparents, may they rest in heaven. You remember, enjoy yourself while you're young, because as you get older, life will be go. It'll go so fast. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. So here we are talking about these temporal things, the um, issue of the election. I don't know how big that is. You know, it'll be forgotten tomorrow. 
except by, uh, you know, the people on MSNBC. They'll make it a mandate already against uh, conservatism. Come on, wake up. The African-Americans tilted this vote largely. The women tilted the vote largely. And it was over the sex scandals. Right or wrong, true or false, doesn't matter. It's stuck. The Washington Post dug it up. It's stuck. There was no way around it. And that was the end of it. It had nothing to do with values other than morality is what it had to do with. And if you want a real interpretation, it had to do with Christian values, incidentally. And Roy Moore was hung by his own petard. Let me add that as a little, a little uh, kicker. Roy Moore, who posed as a Ten Commandments guy who was above everyone with his morality, was actually hung by his own petard because they said he is the biggest hypocrite there is, if this is true. And they didn't want anyone with that around them in office. That's what it's about. It's about Christian values. And they were upheld in this election. You haven't heard that from anyone else, and you're not going to. You know why? Because God is dead in the media, except on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Michael Savage, weekdays from noon to 3 on Talk Radio 560, KSFO. Hey, 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 I'll bet you don't spend time thinking about your circulation. You really, who does? But you should. Good circulation is crucial to energy and stamina. It gets oxygen and nutrients flowing throughout your body. So you can exercise longer, do more everyday activities, and recover more quickly. So what do you do to promote healthy circulation? I tell you, drink Super Beats. Super Beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. Only Super Beats, I've told you, is made from beets grown to exacting standards and then concentrated into superfood crystals. So if you want to improve your circulation... There's only one thing to do. Call 800-481-0504 or visit SavageLovesBeats.com. And with your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free and free indicator strips so you can test to see how Super Beats are working inside your body and free shipping. Just simply call 800-481-0504 or go to SavageLovesBeats.com today. Let's go to Ireland. That is the country of Ireland, where Sally is calling on the Internet. Sally, line eight, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Okay, what I'm... that It should be legal to sell your body. We, every day, sell our bodies and minds through other means, models and movers, uh, and in any field. We sell our body and our minds. So why... There's an 18-year-old Romanian model who just sold her virginity for $3 million to an Abu Dhabi businessman through an escort service you're arguing when i said in light of the alabama uh, election upset which was based on sex scandals should prostitution be legalized you're saying yes yes are, are you in the business no so why do you argue for it wouldn't it fly in the face of family values and ruin marriages no actually i think it would save a marriage if they have a poor sexual relationship and a wonderful friendship to be able to uh, have that sexual release with somebody that they can walk away from and go back to their family, I think. Well, it's a thought, but then there's a disease issue and things like that. No, even if you, you want to do it in a clinical, even if you want to talk about this in a straight clinical manner without discussing morality, I mean, it's the issue, the, the issue of sexuality, there's the blackmail issue, there's an awful lot of other things that have to be considered, you know. I thank you for calling from Ireland. My main point in the first hour came up towards the end of the last segment. I don't want it lost, which is the election in Alabama was not a repudiation of conservative values, as the small fry in the media may want to say. It was an affirmation of Christian values and that Roy Moore was hung by his own petard. They said he's a hypocrite. Even if the allegations are even partly true, they didn't want anyone tainted like that in in a higher office. And uh, a man who pushed the Ten Commandments gets surrounded with these scandals. And, no, and the African-American community in Alabama is extremely religiously Christian and conservative. You're not going to hear that from the small fry in television. I can guarantee you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. 
Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, you know, I'm a dog, and I'm kind of new to this family, but I've noticed a trend. My humans do this thing where they go around and get all my toys and hide them in this basket, but it's always, but it's always the same basket, and it's always the same place, and then they act so surprised when I find them, but I'm like, hello, that's where you put it last time. Humans are the worst at hide-and-go-seek. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs>